Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. There's not much happening out here in my front garden at the moment because it's all slowed down for winter. But there's still plenty of food to be harvested. I've got lots of leafy greens, Swiss chard, lettuce, sorrel. I've got some broccoli coming along and plenty of rocket. Combined with my pantry and freezer stores from my summer garden, it all should feed me pretty well over the coming months. I was going to clear out all of the old plants in this garden and head it off to the compost until I noticed some birds in the brassica plants feasting on bugs and bees enjoying radish and brassica flowers. My nasturtiums have usually been killed off with frosts by now but there's still plenty of flowers there also. Since I have one full compost bay already I think I might hold off clearing the garden until later so that the birds and bees can continue to enjoy it. So with not much to do here, means I can get a few projects done elsewhere. I've been wanting to dig up some young acacia trees that have been growing in my swales and move them, so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to use some of this hay that I've resourced from one of the local farmers. It's very old, but it's going to be great as a mulch for the plants that I'm going to get into the ground. We've had about 150 mil of rain here in the last two weeks, so it's really hydrated everything beautifully. My swales are working well and my dam is just about full. Now it's the perfect time to actually harvest some of these little plants that are smack bang in the middle of my swale. Some of the bigger ones, maybe that one, might be too well established to transfer well, but there's smaller ones that should have a small root system and I'm crossing my fingers that I'll be able to move them from here in the way to somewhere that they'll be more useful. There's lots of these little acacia species that are volunteers, they're pioneer species in this area and they come in to repair the soil. There's lots of little ones right along this swale and I should be able to utilise them on the berm to help get those grasses under control. This is the section of my lower swale that's closest to the dam and it's the end where I've started to include a few more edible species. I've got some rhubarb in here, some blackcurrant plants, another little rhubarb right next to this young apple tree. I also do have some acacia already in and tagasasti. I've got a few other species that I've put in. This one here is Indigo Ferra Australis, which will have a lovely little flower come spring and the bees will enjoy it. It is a nitrogen fixing legume, so it's a good chop and drop plant. I have struggled to get this one going because it does get affected with um, severe cold, but we haven't had that yet this year, so it is starting to, to kick in quite well. The plan for this space here is to more intensely plant it out and I'm going to do that with these little acacias just so that I can get some more shading happening of these grasses and also some more mulch available just to get the soil right for the productive trees. With a bit more mulch and a bit more shade created by additional plants, I'm hoping to get this grass under control and build the soil. Um, there's a lot of these deep tap-rooted plants here which also indicate that the soil is quite compacted. I'm just going to start digging up some of these plants down the drier end of my swale because I don't want to create a whole heap of mud. There's quite a lot in this section so I'm going to start here. A lot of what I do is actually looking out for resources that I can utilise around the farm. To start with, I did have to buy my plants in, but now I'm finding all these little plants are just growing on their own. So it's a matter of making the most of what you've got and transferring these to where they'll really be of value. We'll start with digging a few up 
and then I'll move them to their new location. It's roots, it just goes in there. The soil is so wet. Okay. Looks like this plant has already been mowed over once before. But I've got a bit of a, a root system, so I don't know how this one will go, but we'll give it a give it a whirl. I'll get this one next to it as well. Now you can see that even on those little plants, they had quite a big taproot, which is why probably something like that won't transfer very well, or these larger plants here. So I'll leave them be, but these little ones here are worth trying. Might try and take a bigger root ball this time. Actually, it goes way down. I might have to go and get my large spade because their roots are amazing. No wonder they establish well. They get that root down into the ground so they can access what they need, including water and nutrition. Yeah, see I've broken that off. I think I'm going to have to go and get a decent spade and do these plants properly. All right, I'll take that. Ooh, here's the root. Oh, well, we'll just transfer that as a plug. I might have to come through and fill these holes a bit later, though. little plants there so I think that's probably enough for the moment I think I'll only just put these guys in that have quite a bit of a root ball because to be honest I don't think that's going to be enough to get these little trees going now I really should come over here with my big uh, whipper snipper my brush cutter and a bit of this but it won't take too long just with my little sickle so it's a another slow and small solution around here I'll just clear um, the area where I'm going to put these trees just so that I can um, give them a good start and I can use these trimmings as the mulch being the support trees I'm not going to give them too much love um, like I would with planting a productive tree uh, I'm just going to put them in the ground, water them and use this as the mulch around them and uh, cross my fingers. And we need that shade factor too to um, shade out all these grasses. This, they're not growing at the moment, but come spring, it'll all take off again. So I come across these little frogs all the time. We just need to move him on. There he goes, disappeared. While I'm here, I'll just clear around some of these little plants that I've already planted. This is a, a tagasasti that I've added in that I've grown from seed. So I'll just make sure that that's kind of looked after with some grassy mulch as well. I've cleared all the grasses just using my sickle. By using the sickle instead of my super duper brush cutter, I can kind of be mindful of little trees that I've planted and not cut them down and I can also just watch out for the, the wildlife I come across like the caterpillars and the little frogs and I can relocate them safely. So now it's just simply a, a matter of finding homes for this lot. 
Now these little plants, I'm not even going to bother with. I don't think there's enough root system on them and I did let them dry out. So I'm just going to use those as mulch. But I will get into the ground these that have got the, the pretty decent root ball on them. So now it's just a matter of getting these all into the ground. mulch right around it straight away so I don't lose where I've put them. I'm going to freshly cut grass in first and then I will put the older hay over the top so that you can actually identify it a lot better. Once I get them all into the ground I'll get around and uh, water them all in. So that's one. We've got a bit of rainy weather coming up, so that will help these plants kind of get re-established. And three. With a good water, that soil should work its way back in around that root ball. Uh, I've hit the spot where they're coming up. These are little daffodil bulbs. So I'll carefully look after those and hopefully they still come up next to this little plant. It was really too soon to put daffodil bulbs in with all these grasses still an issue. But some are surviving. And it is really lovely in uh, late winter to have those beautiful flowers coming through. Well, that's my seven plants in the ground now. I'm going to get the rest of the old hay and the fresh grass that I've just cut and spread it around this area and then give these plants a nice water. section of my food forest right at the beginning the soil is fairly heavy clay so I'm planning on just building this soil improving it a lot more before adding in a shrub layer and perhaps some herbs and just make sure they've been given a better chance to take off but hopefully these little guys that have been transplanted will start to kick in over winter and into spring. Well, that's just a small section of my food forest improved. Hopefully these little plants start to take off and I can use them as mulch down the track and we can start to get these grasses in this area under control a little bit more. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.